Your Highnesses, Your Highness Excellencies, Your Graces, my Lords, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure, first of all, to welcome you to this city on behalf of the Catholic community of England and Wales, and to offer a particular welcome to the Grand Master of the Sacred Military Constantinian Order of St. George. I thank the Order for bringing us together this evening to mark these days of Olympic Games. Indeed, I thank the Order for all its work and assure all its members of my prayerful support. A little earlier this evening, in the midst of this gala dinner, my good friend, the Ambassador of Paraguay, sidled up to me and he said, have you heard this story? I said, which? She said, the Christian walking out into the Colosseum to face the great crowd and the hungry lions. And he walks up to one of the lions and says something very discreetly into the lion's ear. And the lion startles back and slinks back to its cage. The Emperor of Europe is very put out, so calls for the Christian to stand before him. What did you say to that lion? He said. Oh, Emperor, the Christian said, I simply said to him, don't forget, after the dinner comes the speeches. <laughs> These weeks of the Olympic Games, I hope will be very enjoyable for us all. And I hope we will all be able to share in the joys and hopes that are so evident in the, on the faces and in the hearts of many people. Those joys and hopes are probably too many to number. For some, it's simple. The joys and hopes of victory in competition. For some, it's just the thrill of being part of a great historical event. For some, the hope is that all this endeavor will lead to greater harmony and understanding between the peoples of the world. For some, there is the simple hope that all of this will take place in peace and without threat or violence. You all, I'm sure, appreciate the huge effort in preparation that have been made for these games and for the pleasure of welcoming so many to this land. You will know probably that the Olympic Park itself has risen from a polluted industrial wasteland. And yet, 98% of the material reclaimed from that land has been reused or recycled in the construction of the park. Perhaps another less well-known effort is that of the London Philharmonic Orchestra. They have recorded 205 different national anthems for the victory celebrations. And I sincerely hope that they are all required. <laughs> but one, our own, or the most. <laughs> now the level of anticipation is now very high. With the first road race completed today, even while we were celebrating Mass for God's blessing on these games, in Westminster Cathedral. But now the more serious business begins with our great challenge of all sporting contests, the ability to look both victory and defeat in the face and not be phased by either. Of course, many people look to these games to tutor us in much that makes life worthwhile. They can stimulate and do a renewed sense of community people getting together. They can show us again in every athlete how much can be achieved in life with self-discipline, concentrated effort, and healthy competition. The effort exercised by every competitor is an example for us all in how to apply ourselves to life itself. This is sport serving to fashion character. And this perhaps is particularly true of the Paralympic Games. And I believe that this part of the Games may well have the longest lasting effect. I learned just recently 
that the Paralympics first began here in London only in 1948. And there were just three participating countries, the Netherlands, Canada, and Great Britain. So what great progress has been made since then. Now the follow-up to these games is also part of this moment of joy and hope. The told that the Olympic Park itself, all 250 acres, will become the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park, the largest development of parkland in this city for over a hundred years. And we're honored to have received our message from Her Majesty the Queen for this evening's gathering. Young people who have come for these games will, it is hoped, return home with a far deeper appreciation of other nations, of other peoples, many less affluent than themselves, yet no less noble or honorable, with whom they will now have a deeper sense of solidarity in the face of life's difficulties. It is proper in this company and setting that I affirm most strongly the words of the Second Vatican Council, that the joys and the hopes of our human family, as well as its sorrows and fears, are the joys and hopes, the sorrows and fears of the Church throughout the world. And these words have been fully put into practice by the Catholic community here in so many ways in preparation, participation, and follow up to these games. We worked hard to give credence to the ancient Greek tradition of 100 days of peace. These 100 days, from the 8th of June to the 28th of October, are being filled with ventures of prayer, practical action, strong witness, led by our Catholic community in conjunction with many others. Just recently, for example, there was an interfaith Olympic family fun sports day here in London, bringing together Catholics, Anglicans, Pentecostals, other Christians and Muslims. It was a huge success and is set to be repeated next year. In a similar way, efforts continue, given the impetus of these games, to work against knife crime on the streets and to engage youngsters in projects to improve their own communities. Parishes in and around the Olympic Park are all ready to receive hundreds of thousands of visitors passing through their neighborhoods. Chaplaincies and hospitality have been organized on an unprecedented scale, including the Joshua Camp for young people, a kind of Olympic World Youth Day, an event lasting over two years. Already, we have been in touch with Catholic groups in Rio de Janeiro, hoping to pass on to them the experience and enthusiasm we've gained here. And as you have heard, we've established the John Paul II Foundation for Sport, which we hope will be the vehicle for taking forward our follow-up to these games. So I salute so many people who have been engaged in these projects, and even as we sit here enjoying ourselves, our hard at work serving the well-being of these games. So our church supports and shares these high human aspirations so deeply expressed in sport. Successive groups have explored the theme of the deep connections between sport and spirituality. We were honored that during the recent visit to the UK of Pope Benedict XVI, he officially launched our John Paul II Foundation. And just last Sunday, gave an encouraging message for the games. But did you know that one of the most energetic promoters of sport was St. Pius X? At the beginning of the last century, when less than 1% of the local population were engaging in any sporting activity, Pius X understood the potential of sport. He saw it, he said, as the way to approach and group, to bring them together while following certain rules and showing respect for adversaries. 
He understood sport as a way of overcoming differences of race, religion, and differing political ideas. And it is said that one day he retorted to a cardinal, all right, if it's impossible to understand that this can be done, then I myself will do exercise in front of everyone so that they might see that if the Pope can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> I think he might have applied those words to some of us sitting here this evening. <laughs> so let us thoroughly enjoy these Olympic Games. I hope that for us, they can be a window onto the greatness of the Creator, who invites us, as St. Paul says, to use our bodies for his glory. I hope they will show us again how the vision of faith, of one God, who is Father of all, over all, through all, and within all, matches and fulfills our deepest longings, brought to the surface of our thoughts and emotions in events such as these. And I hope that these games, made of a competition for bronze, silver and gold, will prompt us all again to remember the far greater prize that lies ahead of us all, the pure gold of life in God's presence, the fulfillment of our joys and hopes in it. Thank you all for your presence. May God bless these Olympic Games and give us all the grace of His peace and love. Thank you.